Uh, welcome and thanks for coming to the uh, less cool talk of this block. Um, I'm Eric Davies. I work here at Invenia Technical Computing. I wrote a Postgres interface for MATLAB for them, uh, which might become open source at some point. Um, and when Julia round, rolled around, it didn't have a Postgres interface, so I wrote one for Julia. Um, shout out to Isaiah Norton for making that easy, by the way. That clang.jl wrapper is great. Um, and the interface I'm working on right now is called dbapi.jl, um, which you probably haven't heard much about because I pushed it today. <laughs> uh, before we talk about where we might go with a consistent database interface, uh, we should probably talk about why we would want to go that route. Uh, why not define our own application-specific interfaces to drivers, which is what we were all taught in software engineering class in university, is what everyone does. Um, well, with a consistent database interface, we can swap out the production database driver for a testing database driver. Um, it's useful if you want to test with a lightweight database like SQLite. Um, or if you want to mock out database interactions with a custom in-memory object. If you want to switch database systems, it's useful to not have to rewrite your application code. And if the interface is consistent, data developers working with databases only have to learn one interface instead of learning a different API for each database system. Uh, so other programming languages exist and have tried to do this as well. Um, I'm going to talk about two examples, Python's dbapi and Perl's dbi. Uh, dbapi 2.0 is their current version. Um, unlike other interfaces, it contains no code. It's just an interface specification. And it exists on the public domain. You can find it on PEP 249. And it does not itself evaluate or verify that any database driver implements it. When you write a driver for Python, you simply note in the documentation, hey, my interface follows dbapi 2.0. And the user trusts that what you've written does follow that and write, writes code for dbapi. It has pretty few functions, few abstractions. Each driver has to have a connection class and a cursor class, which provides a certain simple interface. The key abstraction is the cursor. Uh, it either represents a client-side cursor, uh, like in MySQL, or a server-side cursor, like in Postgres, or it might just be an abstraction over transactions or sequential interactions in general. It executes statements and returns and iterates over results. It's pretty simple interaction. Uh, in contrast, Perl's DPA, DBI contains code, over 2,000 lines of it. It also comes with an order of magnitude more documentation than DBAPI, as one might expect from a CPAN package. Uh, it's, it's a, it acts as a gatekeeper. It delegates work to the appropriate driver. It performs some pre- and post-processing on data and includes some wrapper methods for working with different data structures and different data flows. Uh, one is discouraged explicitly in their documentation from writing drivers. Um, those drivers that are written are blessed, pun intended, by the database special interest group. There's a list of all of them on their website. Their uh, core abstraction is the statement handle. Uh, you prepare a statement, you execute it, then you fetch the results. Uh, preparation could mean using client-side prepared statements, or it could just be storing a SQL string and returning a statement handle that is containing only that. 
All right, so we've had some efforts to make a standard database interface for Julia. The Julia DB organization exists to coordinate those efforts. Currently, it's John Miles White, Jacob Quinn, who I need to actually meet sometime, uh, and myself. <laughs> Um, we're the only members right now, but we'd warmly welcome other contributors, of course. Uh, the most popular option for people using Julia right now is Julia's ODBC driver from Jacob Quinn. Uh, the be benefit of using ODBC is that you only, um, the developer of the interface only needs to write one interface to ODBC. Um, because it's a daemon style intermediary which handles delegation to its own drivers. Uh, so people out there have written drivers for ODBC and ODBC lets you trail your interaction through it to those drivers. Um, ODBC.jl was written pretty early compared to some newer um, driver stuff and it's got a small amount of stable, well-tested features the downside is that the feature set is limited to the feature set of ODBC, um, and the methods just wrapping those methods. And the other downside is that there is an intermediary layer of data processing that might, in your specific case, be slowing down your data flow from the database to you and Julia. Now, one of the packages that uh, spawned the whole organization working together was dbi.jl uh, from John Miles White. Uh, it's largely implemented by like Perl's dbi, and it defines an interface with abstract types and methods, which drivers subtype and overload. And there's been a few attempts to implement that in my package PostgreSQL and a SQLite driver and my SQL driver. Um, so I found it to be simple to implement, but there were a few incongruities with what I was doing in, with Postgres, like statement preparation doesn't actually do anything. Um, it sort of fits awkwardly around the Postgres's C library data structures. And it really required two data representations, like an iterative one and uh, one that just grabs all of the data, which uses data frames. So I was kind of unsatisfied with it, and I had some conflicts for a while. Um, so I've started to propose an alternate, which you can find in the Julia DB organization in an early format. It shares some characteristics with DBI. It's got a minimal implementation requirements. It's gonna have abstract methods and types, and it takes inspiration from open source, but this time from Python's DB API instead of Perl's DBI. There are pre several core ideas that I like to build into this DB API. Um, optional extensions. So you can standardize features that not everyone implements and allow people to um, have a consistent interface for things that may not apply to all databases. And um, uh, I'd like to have interface verifiability, so you can check uh, at runtime that a database driver actually implements the interface required by DBI API. And I'd like it to be simple so it could form the basis for more complicated and creative database packages that uh, work over all databases. Um, there are a few challenges. I haven't really decided exactly how I want to tackle them yet. Um, one of those is the data model, which John touched on yesterday, uh, or earlier today? Yesterday. Um, Julia Stats is trying to find its own data model, and I think we need to do so for the database interaction. Um, 
in Python, it's just resolved when you fetch data out as tuples. It's really simple, but I think we can do better. Um, I'd like to avoid that, especially because it requires you to have all your data in memory or, and be inter interacting sequentially. And I'd like to be able to do random seeks and do running statistics over a database. Um, I'd like there to be an interface for asynchronous database access. That's something that doesn't exist in many other uh, uh, database interface packages, but is something that I think it would be very useful and would really fit with Julia's asynchronous APIs. Um, types are often implemented in database interfaces. They sort of say, oh, all SQL implements these types. And that's not nearly always true. Um, I would rather leave that up to the database drivers, but I'm not against having a way to talk about type conversions between the database and Julia. And I also like to have the ability to um, talk about non-database backends, non-database database drivers, something that would implement the interface but would sit in memory or in a CSV file uh, so we could talk about more data than just um, an interface to a database system. Speaking of wrappers, if anyone's ever looked at SQL Alchemy, they know how nice it can be to have a standard abstraction over database interfaces. It's got a core abstraction, modular ORM. I don't, I'm not sure we need SQLAlchemy.jl, but I would like to have some sort of wrapper with some advanced features that just sits over DB API. Um, this is something I emailed to John like an hour ago. Um, and this could be something that we do that wraps over DB API, just taking, um, taking the basic constructs that we know our databases have and having table abstractions over that, a filter that maybe works in the database for database systems or in memory if you're wrapping a data frame, uh, something cool. I want us to have something cool because it's Julia. Uh, so in conclusion, I would like everyone that is interested to come onto the DB API issues list, um, give suggestions, complain about what I did, um, and help us out to decide where we're going. And especially if you want to contribute, that would be super fun. And that's all. I don't know if we'll have time for discussion. We're supposed to have closing remarks at 6.20. I'm not really clear where the closing remarks are. The, room, the, the other rooms were there? This is 1.41. It's supposed to be 1.41? Okay. Oh, okay. So we should then close up soon. Yeah. But please, if we have questions, I'd love to have a few for it. Where are these non-relational databases <laughs> yeah. So um, there are a few types of those. And I think some would work well, but since we haven't decided on a data model, um, that can be adaptive. We can uh, choose a data model that would allow that. Yeah, and, and that's something that we could definitely have. I think I want to do that. Um, there are many, many types of non-relational databases. I can imagine that we might pick a data model that doesn't support them all. So if anyone has something they'd like to be included, um, mention it and we'll consider it while we're sort of deciding what to do. do you, are you using uh, Stephen's Stack FP yet? Or thinking about that? Um, Scott asked if I'm using uh, deckfp.jl. Um, I'm glad you mentioned one of my favorite things because I love that there's an IEEE specification for decimal arithmetic. And it's now implemented uh, in Julia as a wrapper to an Intel library. Yes, I want to use it in, in my Postgres library. I don't know if it has a place in DB API because I don't necessarily want to do type conversions in there. 
Um, but I definitely want to use it in Postgres. I think that's a good idea. I haven't looked at Link, um, but I will. Could you repeat some of the questions? Um, he asked if I was looking at Link uh, that exists in C Sharp, L I N Q, um, and I haven't. I am sort of aware that it exists, but I don't know much about it, so I will. All right. Um, looks like people are streaming in, so I'll pass it back.